Hello, welcome to another session of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. This is Dr. Bernstein and today we're going to speak about diabetes and hypothyroidism. I discovered after practicing many years that close to a hundred percent of my patients, new patients I should say, were hypothyroid. I'll explain what that means in a moment. Uh, when I say close to 100%, probably I'm talking 97%. It's amazing how many people have diabetes plus hypothyroidism plus psoriasis. We spoke in another session about psoriasis, and now we're talking about hypothyroidism, which is uh, too little thyroid hormone in the body. Now, what I observed was something sort of strange that most uh, doctors don't think about, and that is the conversion of T4 to T3. Uh, the thyroid gland makes several hormones. The major one is called T4 or levothyroxine. It uh, has four iodine groups in it and that's why it's called T4. The T4 gets stored in the tissues of the body where enzymes called deiodinases remove one of the iodines from the T4 to make T3 on an as-needed basis. Uh, T3 is really the active hormone. T4 has a small effect. T3 has a big effect. Now what does T3 do? It speeds up the metabolism uh, awakens you, uh, makes everything move uh, at a higher rate. So, uh, if you don't have enough T3, you may be tired, you may be sluggish, you may be weak, you may have slow digestion, uh, the whole organism slows down. And what I find is that most of the diabetics who come to see me, rather than having a gross deficiency of T4, may have a, an impairment in the conversion of T4 to T3. Or they may have a combination of T4 deficiency plus impaired conversion of T4 to T3. Now, these patients may have had diabetes for 10, 20 years and have been seeing endocrinologists every month or two for all those years and were never diagnosed with hypothyroidism, even though they were complaining of being cold or tired or having other symptoms of low thyroid. Why is this? The reason is that most doctors do only one test for hypothyroidism, and it's the test that's the poorest at making the diagnosis, namely TSH, which is a hormone made by the pituitary gland to tell the thyroid, make more T4, and uh, it's not a good indicator of hypothyroidism, in fact, the standards as to what is a normal TSH, what is a high TSH, what is a low TSH are uh, being argued uh, to this day uh, when they should be looking principally at the active hormone, which is free T3. T3 that is not free is bound to uh, proteins in the blood. T4 that is not free is bound to t proteins in the blood. And what I look at principally is free T3 and free T4. 
but the free T3 is really the active hormone. The only reason I look at free T4 is because if I'm giving thyroid replacement and the free T4 is low, I'll give enough T4 to bring it up into the middle of the normal range. In rare situations, we may need to look at TSH also. For example, I have one patient who has low free T3, and when we replace it with even a little bit of T3 to bring him up into the normal range, he gets agitated. His uh, systems speed up, gets insomnia, and so on. So there we would additionally check the TSH. And if the TSH is very low, it means that uh, somehow uh, we're giving him too much of the T3. So uh, the treatment for, the most, for most people is probably some T4. Uh, the brand that we like best is called Synthroid because it tends to be consistent and reliable. Uh, there are several other uh, brands like Levoxyl in the USA, which is reliable. But there are also many uh, generic T4s that are not consistent, where each batch is different. So I tend to prefer the brands of T4. Now, what about T3? Um, T3 is sold in the USA under the brand name Cytomel, and also there are generic Cytomels. Uh, the brand name is, the generic name is Liothyronine, L-I-O-T-H-Y-R-O-N-I-N-E. However, Liothyronine per se is very rapid acting and finishes working in about eight hours. So to get a steady level all day long, you have to take it every eight hours. Well, most people forget to take the afternoon dose. That's one problem with, gen with any liothyronine. The other problem is that the liothyronine that is being sold is sold in multiples of five micrograms. So what happens if you're a little child and you only need a total of two micrograms in a day. You can't buy it. So what we do is we get a compounding chemist to prepare capsules of slow-release liothyronine, where the uh, hormone has been, a powdered hormone has been mixed with methyl cellulose to slow down its action put in a capsule, and it will last uh, over 12 hours, so you could take it twice a day every 12 hours. There are some guidelines that must be followed if people take thyroid hormones by mouth. You don't want to be taking soy products because they impair the absorption of the thyroid hormone. If you're taking high fiber products or any heavy metals like iron or calcium or zinc, it should be at least two hours away from the thyroid hormone that you uh, consume. Now, uh, we will retest T3 in a month after we start a prescription to see what we've done to the levels. Are they mid-normal, are they normal, are they high, uh, are they low? And we'll readjust the dosing of the time release T3 uh, based upon the lab tests. T4s have a longer half-life, maybe of the order of a month or two, so we retest those after two months and may purchase uh, another dose of Synthroid. I'll just show you a card with the Synthroid doses.
Synthroid and its competitors come in quite a number of different doses. The pills are different colors. On rare occasions, I found people uh, allergic to the colors. And then I'll, I'll give them uh, multiples uh, of the 50 uh, microgram dose, which is white. <laughs> And uh, that's a very rare situation where people are allergic to the colors. Uh, the symptoms of hypothyroidism are tiredness, nocturnal leg cramps, feeling cold, and I'm not talking about cold hands and cold feet. That's something else. Uh, but I'm talking about cold all over. Um, poor memory. I do a short-term memory test on every new patient before uh, I give them uh, the liothyronine, uh, which will bring back their short-term memory within a day or two. <laughs> so I want to catch it at onset. And I have, la I have lab results on every new patient when they come in for the first time. So I know if they're hypothyroid before I even meet them. And uh, we, the, the simple test for short-term memory is to give them a random list of six digits and ask them to repeat them in reverse order. So I give them Sam Spade's license number. If you don't know who Sam Spade is, you can look him up on the internet. He's a famous private eye. And uh, his license number has six digits and I ask people to read them back to me or to f recite them back to me in reverse order. If they can't remember six digits, then uh, uh, they have a poor memory. <laughs> uh, and we see uh, that within days of starting liothyronine, their memories improve. Um, I've seen many people who thought they had Alzheimer's disease when in reality they were just hypothyroid. And many of these people had been seeing endocrinologists for years. Um, there are some extreme side effects of hypothyroidism, uh, such as muscle cramps in multiple muscles and not just uh, overnight. Um, also, there's what's called lymphedema. Now, this is, uh, could be just a swelling of the legs, but it's a non-pitting swelling. What is pitting? Pitting is if you have a swollen leg and you push with your finger into the swelling, take the finger away and it leaves a depression, that's a pit. So that uh, usually is due to uh, uh, a lot of water under the skin, as in conditions like chronic venous insufficiency. But non pitting edema is characteristic of, hypothyro of severe hypothyroidism. And when you feel the legs that have non pitting edema, they feel hard. It's a hard edema. And uh, I've had patients who've had this for years and were, uh, whose doctors were giving them diuretics to force them to lose water. They were dehydrating them, uh, causing side effects, and not examining the patient to see what kind of edema they had. Uh, nowadays, it's unfortunate that uh, m maybe they're not taught physical examination in medical school. I remember when I went to medical school, we were not taught very well, and I had to learn on my own after I left. And I have med medical students come here, and uh, they've never been taught anything about lymphedema. In any event, uh, the lymphedema can be distressing, not only because it's not going to go away easily. Uh, if you treat the hypothyroidism, it might take months or years for it to resolve, 
but we usually see changes within weeks. Gets softer, uh, gets more peripheral and less central. That means it shrinks in size. But we've had uh, extreme cases where it actually extended up into the pelvic and lower abdominal areas, causing constipation, causing uh, uh, swelling of the vaginal vault that was causing problems, and uh, it's uh, it's serious, not life-threatening, and uh, rare. It's due to extreme hypothyroidism, usually for a long time. I think I've covered this subject pretty well. I just want to emphasize how universal it is amongst people with diabetes. Disorders come in clusters. You rarely see just one disease, like just diabetes. Uh, amongst my patients, since I specialize in diabetes, number one is diabetes. The next most frequent is psoriasis. The next most frequent is hypothyroidism. And the third one is called Raynaud's phenomenon. That's a condition where your hands and feet tend to be cold most of the time, especially if you go out uh, in cold weather. You come home, it might take hours for your hands to warm up. Uh, anyway, that's the story. I think I've told you most of what I tell my patients about hypothyroidism. I hope this is helpful because if you or someone in your family has diabetes, there's a darn good chance that they're also hypothyroid. Uh, good luck. Uh, read below to find out how to uh, get into my monthly uh, teleconference or teleseminar where we answer a lot of questions about diabetes. It's free. Uh, we'll see you next uh, session of uh, Diabetes University. Thank you. Uh, before you sign off from this session of Diabetes University, take a look at my book, Diabetes Solution, which uh, you can view at the site listed below or you can purchase from any online bookstore. Also, visit my monthly seminars, teleseminars. Uh, the site for getting these free seminars is listed below. Um, you can also uh, join the Diabetes Forum where you can ask questions to other diabetics who have read my book and have been using it. And one last thing is if you go to the teleseminar, you can ask questions which I will answer uh, if not the same month that you asked the question, uh, within a month or two thereof. Thanks.